four Penn. Kolioko, probably the biggest gun that Penn brings to the table, ranked 11th. And he's squaring off in a critical, critical battle against Dylan Shaver. Shaver 12 and three on the campaign, rated nine in the country. It's a good reattack there by Kolioko. Good defense by Shaver. You mentioned the critical bout right here, Joe. It's critical for both sides. This is why duels are so great in college wrestling. Especially with two evenly matched teams like this right now. Shaver vaulting up the rankings this week. He was, I believe, he was in the mid-20s last week, but because he finished second at the Midlands tournament, one of the more difficult in-season tournaments that you'll have in college wrestling. Got that runner-up finish, lost to Michigan's Dylan Raguson. Got into the top 10. I know Intermat has Kolioko at number 11. Some other services have him at number 7. So, again, this is one of those toss-up bouts we talked about before the broadcast. You know, looking at Kolioko's career, experienced some injuries early on in his pen career. But when he wrestles, he just wins a whole lot. And that was a good back and forth right there. Looked like Shaver was able to hit that high crotch and spin to the back and maybe get that takedown by driving Kolioko to the mat. But again, just both these guys do not stop moving their feet and they're refacing each other. And halfway through this first period, still scoreless. Shaver sizing up Kolioko. This duel has been about as good as advertised. We anticipated it was going to be tight, and Shaver strikes first on Kolioko. That ankle pick was textbook right there. Able to collect both legs to get that first takedown. And again, the all-important first takedown. Let's see what Kolioko could do by trying to break this hand defense. Shaver returns him to the mat. Boy, the gas tank for Shaver, at least in this first pair right now, is on point. Kolioko able to break that hand defense, but he had that leg caught, and Machal able to run right back down with that single leg, stay on top here, and maintain this ride. Just over a minute left here in this opening period. A little gamesmanship there from Shaver. Saw Kolioko's hand with a little too far to the left right there. <laughs> Not always going to get that call, but worth a shot. Three one, Shaver with the lead. Kolioko sizing up Shaver for his opportunity here. Again, these guys have Almost like a boxing match right now, Joe. They, they've traded blows with these shots. Of course, Shaver able to finish the lone takedown of this match right now. But these are two guys that are going to be extremely active on their feet. Short time here, so you don't, either guy, don't want to give up a score. Four seconds. Three, two, one, time. First period expires with a 3 1 lead for Shaver. These guys have not wrestled each other before since Shaver is up a weight this year with a career 25-pounder and now at a more comfortable weight. Both these guys have seen tournament action. Kolioko, three-time NCAA qualifier, made to that round of 16 last year, Joe. And, of course, Shaver qualified in 2022. And he got to the round of 16 as well, 125. Looks like he had a disagreement with the sideline saying, I want to stand up. They weren't having it. Well, they wanted him to increase that riding time a little bit. I understand Shaver's desire to go neutral, just attack on the feet. But again, you had a decent ride in that first period. Trying to build that riding time. And it's, I know it's only at 34 seconds, but could serve you well in the end. One point bout at this point. Shaver is very shifty, but he's got to be careful about backing up a little bit. I know he's in the center of the mat. He is circling, but he's got to be able to re-attack a little bit, too. There's one. Kolioko definitely pushing the pace right now. Yeah, Kolioko definitely in pursuit of Shaver. Shaver, nice shot there. Oh, that was nice, but a great scramble from Kolioko grabbing that right leg now. 
It's about who gets their head high now. Shawver on top. You see Koyoko trying to come out the back. Oh, if Koyoko can pull himself free, he's in a good spot here. But shawver has got that ankle locked. He's trying to keep it tight right now. Koyoko doing a good job, and now it's Shawver. It's a good scramble. Yeah, Koyoko nearly there, but Shawver again recovers. See Shawver trying to cross face here. This is a good job by Koyoko to drive through on that double. Got him to the back as well. Koyoko picking his spot. There's two back points down. Referee's holding it. Shawver's bellying down, not to give up any more points there. Referee telling Shawver to work on the bottom. Koleoko now up four. That could be a huge moment right there, Joe. The fact that Koleoko was able to make that into a five-point move, takedown, two near fall points. Luckily for Shawver, he was able to belly down and get his shoulders a little bit away from the mat right there. Did not give up three or four right there. You see that sequence again. Just like off a great scramble, and again, that's just Koyoko just driving him straight into the mat. Now Shawver's going to answer the question, what do you have in the tank? Starting at neutral here, down four. He doesn't want to wrestle. Again, takedown does not tie the match. Still down by four right now if you're Shawver. I think because he's been active on his feet, that's the strategy right now. You know, go back to your offense right here. Don't spend too much time on the bottom trying to work for that one point. Of course, he got trapped doored by Kolioko on his probably his best attack of the period right there. No doubt. It was a nice fireman's attempt there. Kolioko just did a great job scrambling. But if you're Shawver, you need two takedowns. Kolioko, you're in, if you're Kolioko, you're in good shape right now. See how aggressive Kolioko chooses to be here. He was pursuing Shawver for the entirety of that middle period. Shawver trying to get on those clubs. And again, another fireman coming through. See if he's going to be able to finish. He covers the hips. And picks up the three. He's down by just one. Cuts him loose. Another takedown would put him in front. You saw the entire Rutgers bench say to cut him. If you're Dylan Shawver, that gas tank's improved this year, but you got to go less than a minute to go. If you're Koyoko, don't rest here. Got to stay active on your feet. Now Shawver pushing the pace here. Kolioko is going to get a talking to here shortly. Shawver's in pursuit. And there's a stall warning. But again, it's a two-point lead. Shawver still needs that takedown. He's, He's got to go. He's walking him down. Going for it again. He's going to drive through. Can he hook the leg? Kolioko got to keep that grip. 13 seconds left. This one's going to come down to the wire. Can Shawver finish this? Kolioko holding on. Kolioko doesn't get it right under the bell. It's Shawver coming up with it. Challenge bricks flying everywhere, and Shawver able to get it and stun Kolioko for now. You got to determine where that was three. The official, Joe, definitely called it three on the mat. Coach Goodell for, on the Rutgers bench was, was looking to challenge. He thought he covered the hips in both legs before the buzzer sounded, well before the buzzer sounded. And obviously the challenge would coming from Penn if that is a takedown. He want, they want to challenge that it was no takedown or it was not in time. A lot to sort out here. Officials heading to the replay monitor. An absolutely massive call here. This is huge for the entire duel, Joe, because if Rutgers gets this decision, they're up by five. If Penn gets it, they take a one-point lead going into the final bat of the evening. Huge either way. Kolioka was hanging on to Shaver's leg that whole time. The three definitely went up before the buzzer, but... Now we'll take another look at the monitor to see if that actually occurred. Wouldn't have it any other way here in Philly. It's been tight all afternoon. Right, again, a lot to sort out there. Shawver had, he did have both legs. It's a matter of, did he cover the hips enough? Did he maintain control? And obviously, if Kolioko defending, 
Was his defense good enough such as that wizard or during that scramble position where he had the uh, lock through the crotch as well? And again, if it was ruled a takedown, again, the referee did eventually call it a takedown. And if that is where that takedown happened at that point, then you have to determine, was it before the clock hit all zeros? Right. You saw challenge bricks coming from both sides. I thought we were going to start seeing uh, the rally towels thrown from the stands as well. This is a monumental call right now for this duel. Either way, that is clutch by Schauber to even make it this close. The fact that it went back and forth like that for him to be able to battle back from a five-point move. And again, there you go. The three-point takedown in effect right now. The rule this year, he was down by five. He can end up winning by one right now with the virtue of just two takedowns. This is a long review. I can see both head coaches trying to get a little closer, sneak a peek right here. Because coming up at 141, Joe, Mitch Moore for the Scarlet Knights, undefeated on the air. CJ Composto for Penn. Another toss-up bout right there. But if Rutgers is a five-point lead, I mean, if you're CJ Composto, you're going to do a lot of work if you're going to tech or pin Mitch Moore. Longer that this goes on, is that better for Penn or Rutgers at this point? It's really tough to tell because, again, the, the, the three was called, but you got to determine if that was a takedown before the buzzer, and if it was... Where did it occur? Because I know Coach Goodell, for Rutgers, I could see him out of the corner of my eye. He thought it was a takedown with maybe about 10 seconds left when Shulver had the hips covered. Referee, the, first, the, the primary official, was right on top of it saying no takedown based on what he saw by Koyoko's defense. So you're probably going to come down to the determination of most likely did that takedown where the referee threw, threw up his three fingers, did that occur before the clock hit all zeros? And then, Nick, from where we're sitting, the defense was completely blocked. We, we saw that Kolioko had that high crotch. And then we, we couldn't really see when or if he let it go in terms of his defense. Right now, it's a 9-8 decision win for Shaver. Challenge Brick is down. And again, both challenges came out, so I'm not exactly sure what Roger Ray is challenging, unless the only thing he was going to challenge was the takedown did not occur before the buzzer. Crowd getting impatient. Both benches holding up three or no takedowns. It's like, it's like calling for a first down in football, Joe. Yeah, you just ask the benches. They'll sort it out. <laughs> it's fine. The players on the field can, can surely tell you where the ball was spotted. Either way, get ready for an eruption after this one. As you see, Koyoko had the defense there, or at least that, that's what they're claiming. I've seen some long reviews, Joe. This is one of the long ones I've ever seen. Hope you didn't have dinner plans, Nick, because... Uh... Well, I got to give a tip of the cap to you for saving me a sandwich when I got here. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like it's going to go Rucker's direction. They do give him the takedown. Shaver comes up with the last second takedown and a massive, massive win in this duel with one bout to go. With that, it puts Rutgers up by five. And now Mitch Moore, based on the rankings right here.